Okay, so today I was uh, thinking about <clears throat> some wood finishing ideas, and I recently had refinished this wood here. It's just pine, but it's old trim, and it's actually pretty nice wood. And uh, apparently there's a way to make pine give it sort of a uh, an antiqued character if you were to apply some nitric acid to it. Basically, you avoid the issues associated with using heat to do the same thing. You do it chemically. It gives the same color, the same characteristics, but it doesn't warp the wood and crack it and dry it out and all those bad things. Um, so then, you know, in order to do that, obviously, you have to obtain nitric acid. And, like, where am I going to get nitric acid from? I mean, obviously, you could buy it like any sane person would just purchase it. However, um... The whole concept of making nitric acid reminded me of reading about this process called the uh, Birkeland Eide process. And I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, but the Birkeland Eide process was a um, early process for the manufacture of nitric acid or nitrates in general from nitrogen in the atmosphere. So you know, obviously today you think about every time I go into the grocery store and I look around and there's just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of food items for sale. You know, in every every store in Walmart, whether it's Wegmans, Walmart, wherever you go. And you think about, you know, how are we able to produce all this stuff? Um and then, and then not only how are we able to produce it, but how is like a tiny fraction of the population able to produce it? You know, there's like 2% of the population is farmers. So not a lot of people working to produce all the food that we eat. You know, and there's the fact that we throw away 50% of all the food that we buy. But getting back to the subject, what makes all that possible pretty much is nitrogen fixation. So... Prior to nitrogen fixation, you know, people were mining bat guano and bird poop in order to fertilize their, their crops. So, you know, they were actually shipping out to these islands in the, in the middle of the ocean to, to mine bat poop and bird poop in order to use it for a fertilizer. You know, and as people started getting the idea, you know, they figured out that nitrogen as the element what it was makes up the majority of the atmosphere and they also figured out prior to you know say 1890 that nitrogen is also important for plant growth but it has to be in the form of nitrate it has to be oxidized <clears throat> it has to be fixed as it's often called so how do we do this you know and the problem was even they knew this way back then the nitrogen in the atmosphere, N2, is two nitrogen atoms, and they're connected by a triple bond. Triple bond, and that and that that bond takes an enormous amount of energy to break that bond. So that's why nitrogen in the atmosphere is so stable. You know, it doesn't really react with anything. It just kind of hangs out and it's just there for the ride. Um, so if we wanted to take the nitrogen out of the air, which is incredibly abundant, there's vast amounts of nitrogen in the atmosphere, and we wanted to use it to fertilize our crops, somehow we got to break that bond, triple bond. How do we do that? So some guy named Birkeland and some guy named Ide, they're from Norway, I don't know, like 18... 70 or something like that kind of like in the beginning of the electricity era um, Norway is kind of unique in that it has and a uh, well endowed with hydropower resources so they were developing all these hydropower plants more electricity than anybody could ever dream of using at the time this was even before aluminum smelting was a thing which is another electrical consumer um, so you know why don't we try to use this uh electricity to produce nitrate. You know, and it was understood before then that if you made an electrical arc, 
the temperature of that arc would be high enough, they're very hot, to take the nitrogen in the atmosphere and break that triple bond and actually oxidize the nitrogen and create nitric oxide or NO. It's kind of ironic because they did this in Norway and it's NO. But nonetheless, <clears throat> the um, whole idea was you create an electrical arc, you put some air in there, and then you uh, somehow have to collect that nitric oxide. You know, you get the idea here. So air goes in here. Atmosphere goes in there. There's an arc. You know, it heats it up. Nitric oxide with a little bit of air with a little bit of nitric oxide comes across. And then it goes into water. Because nitric oxide will react with water. And it will convert to uh, nitric acid. So, <clears throat> to create that arc, we need a high voltage. So now we got into the technology. So how do we, you know, what processes do we have available in order to produce nitrate? Um, so the Birkeland Ide process was an early process, an early technology uh, using electricity to take atmosphere and break down the nitrogen collect the nitrate, nitric oxide and make nitric acid, which then could be converted into fertilizer. But <clears throat> this is very energy inefficient. So we're using a very high grade form of energy. We're using electricity. That's very expensive energy. And then we're just basically converting it into heat. And then a very small portion of that heat is used to break that bond. But then the rest of the heat just gets dissipated into the environment. Uh, in my case, it's just going to be dissipated into the room. It's going, to, it's going to heat the room up. In the wintertime, that's great, but in the summertime, not so much. Um, nowadays, you know, some guy named Haber came along, and he figured out a way to take a, uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere and make ammonia out of it. And you can take ammonia, and you can burn ammonia, and then you can make nitrate that way. That's much more economical because natural gas is the source of your energy. It's very cheap versus electricity. So what I've done here to try to simulate this process, you know, the problem here, I don't know what kind of concentration this is going to make, but it's just a neat thing to try out. So we have a reactor. This is made from a pickle jar. There are two copper electrodes in there basically forming what we would often call a Jacob's Ladder. We'll see what I mean by that when we turn it on. Kind of bent the electrodes a little bit to give them some cooling so that they don't melt the uh, uh, fittings at the bottom of the, you know, the bulkhead fitting at the bottom of the uh, jar. We have compressed air supplied. So here's our air line regulated down. It comes down across here. I have a hand valve right here that I can adjust the uh, flow. Comes through and it comes into here and then the electrical from this uh, goes in and it pokes through this green tube and then it connects to the electrode on the outside here and the electrode goes up inside the plastic fitting and then the other electrode does the same thing and comes down the other side through the plastic tube. So compressed air goes in here, swirls around inside the jar, and then it comes out the other side, it comes down here, and then it bubbles through this glass of water. The power supply is an oil burner ignition transformer, or an OBIT as they're often called. So the OBIT is a uh, transformer, ignition transformer, 240 VA. So this is a pretty powerful transformer for the size of electrodes we have in here. It has a 10,000 volt secondary, 120 volt primary. So it's actually a 60 hertz transformer rated at 100% duty cycle. So I could just let this thing run and run and run for weeks at a time and make nitric acid if I wanted to. Um, it's obviously got a cord on it so we can plug it right in. I have a cooling fan on top of the reactor because this is going to generate a lot of heat and that heat has to be removed or else the glass will get too hot and will start melting the uh, fittings. 
one of the neat things about this reactor design is the air goes through the fitting as does the copper electrode and it helps to cool the copper electrode through uh, the airflow and same thing with the airflow leaving the reactor so all we got to do is just plug it in so I have some pH strips here uh, measuring the pH of that water prior to making nitric acid we have um, it's about a six which is what you would expect for water that's been exposed to air so, you know this is just plain old tap water it's nothing special six seven somewhere around there so we plug in the power supply So now we're making our arc. It's using about uh, 68 watts of, of power. There's the arc. Basically, that's just going to run, and that arc is well over 3,000 degrees Celsius. That will break that triple bond in the nitrogen and produce nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide as well and it will fill up the jar and then it'll be carried out and it'll bubble through the water so i can already smell the ozone so i'm going to turn on the uh, exhaust fan here plug our cooling fan in cooling fans on so we're just going to make some nitric acid for a little bit. We're going to bubble it through that water. We're going to check the pH after, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. We'll see where we're at. Um, this is going to get really warm. It's already getting kind of warm. Uh, this is very high voltage on these wires. We want to make sure we don't touch that. There's our heart. Okay, so this is definitely a very slow process, but we can see that the pH has dropped to about a four, four or five level in the water glass. So we're making nitric acid as expected. Um, the uh, temperature it's actually not that bad. It's pretty pretty reasonable. Consuming about 67 watts into the transformer. Transformer itself is barely warm at this point, but it's only been running for maybe seven or eight minutes. I didn't feel like waiting the whole time, but um, if I were to leave this run for days, we'd have a glass of nitric acid here with uh, you know maybe one or two percent concentration. It wouldn't be. I wouldn't expect too much out of it. Um, it's definitely a, uh, an interesting concept, but it is definitely making a lot more ozone. So if I shut the fan off, kind of lots and lots of ozone, probably also smelling nitric oxide, but lots of, uh, lots of those things, but Like I said, it works. It uses a lot of energy. Um, obviously, this Birklandide reactor is not optimized, but the general concept is there. Uh, so, just thought it would be a neat demonstration. Uh, they definitely did demonstrate this in chemistry class when we played with nitric acid all the time and it was like oh where's nitric acid come from oh it just comes from the bottle in the back room okay well where's it actually come from this is one way uh, although any nitric acid that you would buy nowadays is actually going to come from like I said combustion of ammonia so pretty much it I think I'll just let this thing run. The only problem is I got to keep the fan on 
or else the basement will fill up with uh, ozone. I don't want that. So, pretty much it. <laughs>